Hello, in this presentation I will talk about configuration, work and tax spaces in robotics. These are terms that we will frequently use and it is important to differentiate between them, particularly in robot motion planning problems. The aims of the presentation are on the one hand to differentiate between these spaces as well as to study several cases with the configuration, work and tax spaces of different robot types. We will analyze the topology of each of these spaces at their dimensions. Finally, we will introduce the concepts of redundancy and the neural space of a task. The configuration space of a robot is the space with all possible configurations, that is, the values that joints can take. This space is also known as C space, and here we will refer to it with the letter C. The configuration of a robot represents the minimum parameterization that allows us to uniquely define the position and orientation of the robot. Therefore, we will refer to Q as the generalized coordinate vector that belongs to C. Revolute joints imply a configuration space of S1 and are represented with values between 0 and 2 pi, although some joints might have some physical limits and the range might be smaller. On the other hand, prismatic joints imply that they move in a configuration space R1 and therefore they can take real values, but also they might have some physical limits and the range might be smaller. As I previously mentioned, the robot configuration space is widely used in motion planning problems, mainly because the robot can be treated as a simple point defined by the generalized coordinate vector Q. On the other hand, the robot workspace is a set of poses, that is, positions and orientations that the end effector can achieve. It is very important to know this workspace since you can only perform movements within it. The problem is that its size and shape depends on the type of joints, the length of links, the tool use, and other things, and its computation is not easy. Many manufacturers provide simple diagrams that represent the reach of the robot's wrist, but do not consider the orientation or length of the tool. This diagram they provide in most of the cases is an indicative of the areas where the robot can work. Obviously, the program that controls the robot that is in charge in coordinating the robot movements will take into account if a point is achievable or not, limiting the movements in case we are trying to reach a position outside the robot workspace. In the case of a robot moving in a 3D space, the workspace is always a subspace of R3S3 space, while in the case of a coplanar robot, the workspace is always a subset a subspace, sorry, of R2, S2, S1 space. Here we show the workspace of the IRB140 robot. The computation of this space is it's important to know if a position or orientation of the end effector is achievable or not. We can see two cases, one without considering the robot's tool and the second one considering the robot's tool. As you can see, workspaces are different because of the tool. In both cases, only positions and orientations that do not cause collisions with the floor or even collisions with the robot itself are considered as part of the workspace, also considering the uh, joint's limits. Workspace with the tool is obviously smaller than the one without the tool. Another different concept is the robot task space which is always a subspace of the robot workspace, which defines the set of positions and orientations that the robot must reach, not the ones that can be achieved, but the, the ones that must be reached. An important requirement is that the dimensions of the configuration space is greater, than or, greater or equal than the dimensions of the task, so the task can be accomplished. Now we will analyze different robot types and the dimensions and topology of the configuration, work and tax spaces. In the case of our RRR coplanar robot, the dimension of the configuration space is 3, just like the workspace. However, the configuration space is a subspace of S3, while, as I mentioned earlier, the workspace is a, a subspace of R2S1. The vector of generalized coordinates Q is a vector of dimension 3 that is defined with the values of the joint angles. This robot can perform two types of tasks. 
positioning task with orientation or simply positioning tasks. Depending on the task to be performed, the dimension of the task space is three or two respectively. For example, if we only perform a positioning task having a three degree of freedom robot, this means that multiple configurations will be able to fulfill the indicated task. This is something we will see at the end of the presentation. In the case of a six degrees of freedom robot arm, I showed the dimensions and topology of the configuration work and task spaces. The configuration space is a subspace of S6, while the workspace is a subspace of R3 S3. In this case, its generalized coordinate vector has dimension 6 with the values of the angles of the six joints. With this robot, positioning tasks can be typically performed, which implies a dimension of the task space of 3. Positioning with a final orientation, in this case, for instance, uh, to place components, which imply a dimension of the task space of 4, or 3D positioning on orientation tasks will imply a task of dimension 6. The configuration space of a SCAR robot is a subspace of S3 R1. The dimensions of the generalized coordinate vector is 4, with 3 angular coordinates and 1 displacement, displacement coordinate. With the SCAR robot, we can perform tasks of dimension 3 for the position of components or position and orientation of components, which implies a dimension of 4 of the task. Note that the workspace in this case is R3 S1. Here we show the case of a delta robot with a 4 degrees of freedom. The configuration space is a subspace of S4 and therefore the dimensions of the generalized coordinate vector is 4, all of them angular. The workspace is the same as the one we saw in the, for the SCAR robot, R3 S1, and similarly this kind of robot can have the same kind of task as before. To finish with this series of examples, we will show the configuration, work and task spaces of a Cartesian robot. All of them are subspaces of R3 space. Its configuration is defined with a vector with three real displacement numbers. To end the presentation, I would like to introduce some concepts associated with the configuration and task space of a robot. If a robot has n degrees of freedom and the dimension of the task space is m, then p, n minus m, are the degrees of redundancy of the robot. If p is greater than zero, this will imply that multiple configurations will be able to fulfill the same task. In that case, we say that the robot is redundant. Another concept is the null space of a task which is the space in which it does not matter what values we choose for the joints that they will not affect to the main task. It is just, just this null space in which we can choose between multiple configurations to select the one that, let's say, is more natural for the robot or it's the one that is farther from the joint limits. In the figure, we see how different tasks can be performed with multiple configurations, thanks to the redundancy. In this video, I have explained uh, concepts such as the configuration, the workspace, and the task space of a robot. We have analyzed these spaces for different types of robots. Thank you very much.